so hi one of the good nights podcast here with jamie uh from luigi's diy we're gonna ask them some questions today i'm gonna start uh so what inspired you to start luigi's diy and what does the name mean so we were we've been a house venue in philly for a good bit now i think september 2019 Hmm. um we're luigi's mansion um and then when the pandemic happened we were trying to find a way to continue to platform and elevate bands. So we kind of switched to a more digital angle. Uh, and then we switched to the name Luigi's DIY kind of informally, semi-formally, um, pretty recently when we set up our website, which is uh, just luigisdiy.com. Mm-hmm. And then that's just cause like, once we were starting to do some monetized transactions on these tapes and put it up online outside of social media, we didn't want to be like blatantly copying names mm-hmm. also for search engine optimization and stuff. It really messes with it to just be called Luigi's mansion. And Nintendo will go after you as well. Cause they're so happy anyway. <laughs> I didn't want to worry about that. And I didn't want to worry about people searching for it, looking for Luigi's mansion, this Luigi's mansion, that finding like let's plays and stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's fair. All right. Uh, so congratulations on your newest wave of tapes. How do you feel about the response to that announcement so far? Uh, it's been it's been really good. We've we've had a lot of people sharing the news um, and sharing the initial announcement of the program in general. Um, I'm really excited anytime we can get ears on some of these these sessions because we've been re- recording these um or having people record them, I guess, for us since the pandemic started, like yeah. around a year from recording today, I think was when we started booking these. Um, and I have always felt like that stream lives mm-hmm. in that short moment, but we do archive everything. And part of what's what's cool is you never know, like who's gonna be way bigger mm-hmm in six months or never thought was possible um since you put since we put it out uh for example we did a on our sixth episode of our our instagram series we had barty strange on holy shit and then a couple months later uh that record came out and obviously i was blown away by what barty had out already and barty's performance on our instagram stream was one of like my favorite performers we've had on yeah uh but when that record came out, I was like, okay, this is something something different from what I had expected and something that really surprised me. Um, so it's really cool to like encourage people to take a look back at some of these older sessions um, and kind of give them a new life in these tapes. And okay. now Bartice is doing uh, late night TV. So yeah, got him early. Right. Mm-hmm. I think you can say that's the first time that's happened. Yeah, insane. Mm-hmm. Uh, hopefully, first of many. Yes. A lot of a lot of bands deserve the spotlight. Mm-hmm. Um. So, can, what can you tell me, like the idea behind starting to sell these tapes? Sure. Um. It's I've been doing tape runs for a while. Um. I work with a, a small DIY label that me and some some bandmates started called Naptime Records. Um. And so we have, I've had the ability to like put music onto tape and I do it sometimes for myself. Mm -hmm. Um, We had been talking about doing this cheam tape for a while because it's um, fully mixed. They tracked it while they did the stream. And then after the fact went and fully mixed it. Uh, So it's like been up on their band camp and stuff. And we were Mm -hmm. thinking about put this on a tape. Um, And then I had been, I kind of thought that was like, for now, all we could really do. Um, but then I was shipping out uh, my one of my bandmates plays a solo project called RU, and they were on the eighth episode, I think. So we put out their solo music on this label I work with, mm-hmm. and they only have a really short EP out. So we were doing it on these kind of redub tapes that we are doing this session on, mm-hmm. and we needed something to put on the side B. So we, I said, okay, let's grab the uh, Luigi TV session from our Instagram and put it on there. Uh, and lately uh, I've been listening to like exclusively tapes when I go out mm-hmm. because I don't have a dongle for my phone. 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I didn't used to need one. I I used to have one of the phones that had the headphone jack, mm. but now it's like the only thing I can put headphone jack in is my little tape player. Yeah. So I've been walking around listening to that tape that I made for that order while I was waiting to ship it. And I finally like I decided I'm like, I'm keeping this one, mm-hmm. making a new one because I really like this. And then I realized that was just an acoustic guitar session recorded through an iPhone. Mm-hmm. And I really liked how it came across on the tape. Yeah. So, uh, we figured why not go through, look at what else we can put out on tape. Okay. Definitely. Okay. I think it's a cool idea. So it yeah. really is. Yeah. yeah. I enjoy it. So how do you actually go about picking each artist or band for the wave? Um, yeah, sure. Initially, when we did the first wave, I was just kind of thinking, well, we have this team full band one. Uh, and I know that we can do some of these acoustic ones. I, I've been a big fan of the Yeah, what we have tape for a long time. Um, or Yeah, what we have session for a long time. So I thought that would be a good fit. And then the stand and wave one was just another one that was full band uh but i actually just for picking the wave two stuff i had some stuff in mind but i wanted to get a little like more scientific and a little more analytical to make sure i didn't burn through everything i liked right away yeah actually yeah. i've been setting up a spreadsheet uh I, i'm a little bit exposing myself as kind of a little bit of a corporate dork in this way but i like a good spreadsheet i like to keep track of the numbers and mm-hmm. all um, I had a big, big spreadsheet when we were booking the Instagram series of every band we had had on and their numbers as they changed before and after playing. Not much, but I was just all the information that I might need. Um, mm-hmm. So I did something similar to that for this, where I went through, listened to things, anything I thought might translate well, uh, I put on there, put the link on there. And then I have all these, I have a lot of like, numbers and stuff about it so i can sort it by like how big is this band mm-hmm. how many do you think we can sell uh how is this a full band set versus an acoustic set um so i'm working with that a little bit now to try and keep things more balanced and to make sure i don't burn through my favorite sets all in one go mm-hmm. um so as you mentioned you're like redubbing older tapes uh what what's the idea behind that Sure. Um, one, it makes things a lot easier financially to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I went down to a record store called Long in the Tooth Records at, here in Philly. Uh, this was a couple of months ago. This was before the pandemic, actually. I guess it was over a year. Oof, yeah. Didn't even realize that. Ouch. But I was, what do you have that you just like will never sell? Mm. What do you have on tape that like you don't want to have anymore? Mm-hmm. And it got me together a bag of about like 20, 25 tapes. Uh, and I think I paid him like seven bucks for it. Wow. That's a steal. And I, and I just, I got, and it was all kinds of crazy stuff in there. There was um, um, like four or five copies of what seems to be like a Beatles for babies record <laughs> called Baby Road. Uh-huh. They got, I like, it didn't sell. It's got like the Abbey Road cover, but with like, a bunch of babies on it wow <laughs> really got all these copies of it but that was like one of the things that the bag was full of so i had all these cheap tapes mm-hmm. and it has kind of the luxury of being able to do it to order i don't need to order when i do things for the label it's like i need to order 25 pink tapes i'm going to make 25 in one sitting and then that's what we have until we sell out of that 25 and then we figure out what comes next Mm-hmm. with this it's like i have my stockpile of tapes everything is going to look different no matter what yeah all i need to do is take how many orders i get exactly and put them on those tapes mm-hmm. so that's a that's kind of a, a burden off me work-wise to do it on the redub tapes but there is also like kind of an aesthetic appeal to it to me at least mm-hmm. um i go in and i do like decorate them with like sharpie yeah and stuff so I'll have, I'll have like a big thing of rainbow Sharpies and I'll just like draw whatever comes to mind. Usually I just kind of trace like the, the, the bumps and the shapes of the cassette. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just also, it's like kind of a tribute to bootleg tapes in general and bootlegging. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of a, kind of a cool concept that I think 
because nobody really like listens to tapes people don't regularly have the means to dub over them either it's not really super common anymore especially since like you don't really need to yeah you can get bootleg music online exactly. but um, i like the idea that you can take a piece of music that sucks that you don't want mm-hmm. I, have a, I have a cat's tape in this, in this stockpile i don't yeah. want to listen I'm not listening to cats, but if I can put one of my favorite bands that I, a live set that I'm not getting on tape otherwise, mm-hmm. you know, this piece of plastic that is basically garbage to me, mm-hmm. I've turned it into a piece of music that I actually like, that's something kind of kind of cool to me. Yeah. All right. That's really cool. And it's also like everybody gets their own, like, I guess, special, unique uh, yeah. tape. Yeah. So if you get the like someone will get the cats <laughs> yeah listen you'll know like it'll say on their cats mm-hmm. I, I won't it up, but i'll probably draw around it but all of them you'll be able to see what it was before that yeah um, and i'm not i'm not great with the rainbow sharpie so you get a lot of unique <laughs> elements in that too unique. I, I met- yeah it's the, it's the artistic that touch exactly <laughs> artistic yeah <laughs> um so what bands and artists are you looking for for the second wave that you're looking at right now can you tell us any of them or are they like top secret you're like no 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 no. almost everything we're waiting on label clearance from one band mm-hmm. i won't name drop them but Dang. Um, okay we're going to be working with uh Hecknang from north carolina mm-hmm. they did a, a pretty pretty banging full band set on our second episode of our instagram series Mm -hmm. Um, which is one of my my favorite ones and we're grabbing the set from nail polish from the carly cosgrove final release stream okay um, the other day which is um they're pretty different from what we normally work with um and it has a full instrumentation but it's not like a band exactly Mm -hmm. like a rock band at least yeah um so it's it's a nice piece of variety um the the third band is full band Mm -hmm. uh probably a bit bigger than the other bands but um they just want to clear it with their label i don't want to like have this come out and then like have a totally different band in that third slot so yeah hush hush right now okay yeah can you tell us afterwards though yeah, for sure. Okay, okay, cool. Thank you. Um, so since you guys are also a venue, uh, what's what's the plan for shows post COVID? Are you guys going to keep on doing these live streams, and then what are your in person shows going to look like? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have um a couple things going on. I guess I can share this with you before anybody else. You're the you're the first people to hear this outside of outside of the house. We're doing okay. um, we're starting shooting full band stream like video i guess it's not going to stream live but full band video with like full mixing and mics and stuff Mm -hmm. in our basement um we're starting that at the end of this month so by the time this comes out we will probably have shot but not released our first episode which is going to be with uh ogbert the nerd from (gasps) let's go oh i love ogbert we're we're pretty excited about that um and everybody should be not me. I'm never getting a vaccine. I don't know. They're really dicking me around in the eligibility, but everybody mm-hmm. who interacts with the band should be fully vaxxed by then. Yeah. Okay. Um, our housemate, Dylan, is engineering everything. Uh, and he's he's on top of the shit. Mm-hmm. So we're excited to have people come in in a safe way and, and make some, some music in our basement again. Mm-hmm. When we can, if we can, have shows ever again. I don't know like how it's going to line up between the end of our lease and the beginning of the world again um Mm -hmm. but i have a dream for if we ever get to have a show again which is that nobody is allowed to play their own songs everybody just has to play like upbeat classics yeah (laughs) because like i have had a year at this point to listen to everybody's recorded music it's Mm -hmm. excellent it's sad it makes me feel things Mm -hmm. all the all those great things but when shows come back, I want the first thing I ha- I hear to be the boys are back in town. So true. <laughs> yeah, that'd be uh, great. So that, that's my vision. I have a whole a whole playlist of like songs I think would be great for that environment, mm-hmm. um, including but not limited to the boys are back in town. 
Listen, all I'm saying is like I know it's not a live show, but I think you could get Ogbert the Nerd to play that for yeah, you your should, first like live session. You should ask them about the 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 packed house. I think is going to be truly special. But um, yeah. yeah, the plan is all upbeat covers all night, mm-hmm. and then we kick out everybody we don't know. Yeah, and party with karaoke. Oh, yeah, that sounds yeah. amazing. I would. We were gonna- that for our first show ever mm-hmm. but by the time it ended like nobody was ready to set up this shit to figure out how to do karaoke <laughs> oh my god i'm gonna learn it i'm gonna figure it out beforehand this time exactly and mistakes again yeah you have I... all this time to figure it out so where do you see the venue in the next five years five years mm-hmm. that's tough um we're all getting close to graduating and stuff soon um mm-hmm. I'm graduating in the spring and then a couple of us are five-year students so they'll be doing an extra year Mm -hmm. so it's really hard to know like in terms of this space this house Mm -hmm. um I will say I expect to at least keep working with music and I want to keep booking music yeah um I, I won't speak for anyone else but I definitely expect to keep booking shows and expect to even if it's just like for fun even if it's at other people's houses Mm -hmm. um before everything shut down i was booking four or five other houses as well not like their whole schedule but i could get something set up if i needed to Mm -hmm. yeah so i I expect even if we're not in this house that there'll be something going on um and i would like to keep up the website and the the bands Mm-hmm. as long as I do uh it's hard to see say exactly where we're going in the future though um yeah. just because of like least stuff and all that least stuff pandemic stuff you know yeah yeah it's uh, it's a bummer kind of the idea that lately I've had to think about when this all started I was like oh we'll be able to have shows again like by the end of the summer mm-hmm. and then it became cl- pr- clear pretty quickly that that wasn't happening um but then it was it was always like okay fall, and then yeah. it was winter, and then lately I've had to come to terms with the fact that there is a possibility we won't have another show in this building mm-hmm. under our management here mm-hmm. at least. Um, this building though has had a lot of like history way before we were here. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been like a Philly house show house for a really long time. Uh, I talked to people who were in the scene like years before me of a lot of different ages they're like yeah you know your place was this place and I had no idea I never know because there's no real recording or archiving of that information anywhere yeah but some of the stories I've heard are pretty intense Hmm. all right uh so for the last couple questions we're gonna shift away from music and go straight to death row boom so if you're on death row what would your last meal be with a drink last meal with the drink yes mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i'm not really like a foodie i would probably just um feel like i'd have like chicken parm maybe i feel like that would be a good good way to go yeah 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 it's great um, and some kind of alcohol i don't know some probably just like something if i'm on death row probably just something pretty strong if i only mm-hmm. get one drink all right all right Solid. Solid. <laughs> uh, so if you could live in one fictional world for a week where would you live like an existing fictional world mm-hmm. well it could be your own fictional world because some people have answered like oh i have this imaginary world or something and i'd be like oh yeah, that's cool that works this is kind of an off the dome answer but i was actually just talking to one of my housemates we were watching the um post malone pokemon concert <gasps> yeah and they have like this crazy virtual stage with all the water Pokemon. Mm -hmm. He was saying, like, if I could be anywhere, I would just want to be hanging out with water Pokemon, listening to I Only Want to Be With You by Hootie Mm -hmm. and the Blazers, because that's what Post Malone was playing. Yeah. Um, And I think that's a pretty good answer. I think I would want to be with the water Pokemon, listening to I Only Want to Be With You by Hootie and the Blowfish. That is the best. That's the best answer you've gotten in a while. I love that so much. That makes me so happy. Yes. It was oddly specific, too. Like, we get Pokemon, but, like, that was a very specific Pokemon answer. They had, like, 
all these jellyfish Pokemon. There's like a lot of Pokemon I don't even know the names of anymore because they're like new and stuff. And I'm not even like a big Post Malone fan, but he did a pretty good job with that Hootie the Blowfish song. He did. And I'm a big Post Malone fan. And I was very surprised. I didn't expect that from him at all, but oh my God. Yeah, Corey made me listen to it and even I was blown away. It was so good. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So I, I have the honor of asking the last question, and every single person who's spoken to have said that it is the most important question. What's your favorite color? Oh, no. This is my worst question. I don't have a favorite color. I've never understood it. How? People have, all my life, people have been asking me, like, what's your favorite color? Because it's, like, a pretty basic question, but I've never had one. <gasps> Man. Are you serious? I've, like, had to answer. There have been points in my life where I had an answer, but... Mm -hmm. I don't feel that way about colors. I don't. I don't. I don't have strong feelings about colors like that. I don't like look at a color and I'm like, yeah, this this gets me pumped. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's valid. That's fair. Yeah, I get that. That's fair. I've never heard anybody else say they didn't have a favorite color, but I could not. I I've, I've told people a lot of things, but I cannot really come up with a true answer that inspires any sort of feeling on what my favorite color is. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's fair. I think cool. we've gotten like two. Yeah. Aside from you, who said, like, I don't really have one, but then we end up, like, pressuring them into saying some color. So, yeah. I, mean, I guess if I was pressured when I was a kid, <gasps> no. I used to I used to tell people my favorite color was green, because I oh. was, like, snakes. Mm -hmm. I, a lot. I don't know. That's so interest that went away very quickly once I wasn't a kid. I don't care about snakes at all now, but as a kid, I was like, I like snakes, and snakes are green. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah <laughs> so so cool and swag so cool. <laughs> um so as i said that's all the questions you have today is there anything that you would like to plug um i think i i covered the wave two tapes and mm -hmm. that Osbert the nerd session i Ooh. do have a release date on that Osbert the nerd session um another thing i guess i don't have a release date on but uh, if it's anywhere close to being out at this point when this was released, um, I'm in a band called Another Hospital that is going to be releasing an EP soon. Um, we're just we've been sitting on it for like a really long time, about as long as I've been living in this house. We've been recording this. Jeez. Wow. Uh, not super actively. It got a lot of like. Oh. Just, <laughs> but I mean, I think it does sound like it's been been kicking around that long. It sounds pretty good in my opinion. So if that's out yet when this comes out, or if that is going to come out when this comes out, uh, listen, I guess. All right. Mm -hmm. Solid. Uh, well, thank you for sitting down with us. This has been Jamie from Luigi's DIY and uh, We're the Good Noise podcast.